Okay, so here's about where we left off the last time. We have our table uh, basically modeled with some placeholder materials assigned to it. Um, I did go ahead and name our materials table base and table top just to keep everything organized. And we have our booth seats here. In this video, I want to go ahead and add uh, the room that all these objects are going to be in. I think at this point, um, I want to start kind of laying things out a little bit. Okay, so what we're going to do, um, I'm just going to pick my table object here, uh, Shift S, cursor to selected, and remember that's where 3D objects are going to come into the scene, is wherever that 3D cursor is. So look at it from a couple different angles, make sure it's actually where we want it. So I'm going to, in object mode, hit Shift A, and we are going to bring in a mesh cube. And this object we're going to name, uh, we'll just call it uh, room. Okay, so uh, numpad 1 to go into front view. We're still in uh, orthographic view. I'm going to uh, shift middle mouse wheel to pan around a little bit and, I don't know, bring us down to about here. Okay, I want the origin of my room to be at the bottom of the object, so uh, a couple different ways that we could do it. I think um, what we have been doing is just going into edit mode, grabbing all the vertices and dragging them up, uh, which works just fine. If we were to control and uh, drag that up, oh, let's see, we need that to be back on yep I moved it along the normal and it's <laughs> it moved way out okay because I had our uh, our transformation orientation on normal so when I grabbed the Z it moved it out straight towards us um, but we can uh, control grab that and snap it up uh, to the bottom and that'll move our uh, the vertices up but keep our mesh origin right where it was. So now the me mesh origin is at the bottom of our object, which is where we want it, but let's uh, control Z to undo that and I'll just show a different way real quick to accomplish the same thing, just, I don't know, just for information. So let's go into edit mode. Uh, I will control tab and pick face mode. I want to pick that bottom face uh, shift S cursor to selected. Now back in object mode under our object menu here uh, we can go transform uh, origin to 3D cursor and that moves our origin down to the 3D cursor which we set to the bottom face so it basically accomplishes the same thing. Uh, just a different way to do it. Anyway, let's uh, control grab our object, snap it up so it's sitting on the floor with our other objects. And this is going to be our room. So let's, uh, in object mode here, let's scale it up a little bit and see how it's not going through the floor because we have the origin set down at the bottom. Now, there's uh, an issue that we need to address before we go too much further. Uh, let's go back into edit mode. And over here, under mesh display we want to look at our normals. I want to look and see our face normals. And if we click that, uh, let's increase the size a little bit. You'll see these little blue lines uh, sticking out of our object now. This uh, indicates the direction that the normals or the direction that the face is facing. Um, and if we are going to be actually inside this object, because uh, all our this is going to be our room, and all our objects are going to be inside it, we want the walls to actually be facing in, not out. So what we can do is uh, go over here under our uh, shading UV tab, and under normals, hit flip direction. Oop, we have to select everything first, of course, and then hit uh, flip direction. Now, uh, the normals are all pointing inside our object, so if we go to, um, let's see, shading, and we hit uh, back face culling, what that does, it will hide or make uh, transparent uh, 
the backs of the faces. So when you're in back of something looking at it, you can look through it. So you can see we're looking at this side wall from the front and we can see it. If we go around here, it becomes transparent so we can see through it. That's where back face culling, I think, comes in the most handy when you're working on stuff like this. Because no matter what direction you turn, you can always see inside it. If we flip the normals again, now we're looking at the front face and you'll see we can't see inside. So it doesn't help us out. All right. Uh, let's go in the front view and we want to size our room. Now once again I am using um, imperial units, uh, feet and inches, since I'm in uh, the United States and that's what I'm used to. Uh, oh, it looks like we have a face facing the wrong direction. Um, our bottom face is facing the wrong direction. So let's select just that face, hit flip direction there. Now, now all the faces are facing the correct way. Good. Okay. So I want to go uh, once again in mesh display. I guess we can turn off our normal display now. And we want to look at edge length. So now if we select our object here, we'll see that it says two feet. Well, we know that's not right because our seats here are taller than two feet. We know that, right? So what's going on here? Um, first of all, let's go back into object mode. Uh, whoops. Alt H. I had hidden our character reference object. We know this is six feet tall. So we know that this cannot possibly be two feet. So what's wrong? The issue is um, the scale of our object is not uniform. If we go back into object mode and we look over here, we'll see that our scale is 2.731. And that's what's throwing off our measurements. So if you scale something in object mode, it will adjust your scale uh, over here and you'll end up with issues like this. So the way to fix that is to press uh, Control A in object mode and we're going to apply uh, we really just need to apply the scale, but I don't know, out of habit I always do rotation and scale. Alright, so our scale has all gone back to 1, so now if we tab back into edit mode, we'll see now that it's showing that our walls are 5.4 uh, feet. So we know everything is displaying correctly now, right? Um, when it comes time to do the uh, actual materials and texturing, we'll have to apply the scale to all our objects uh, before we actually do that. But for right now, let's go ahead uh, in edit mode with everything selected on our room. Let's scale it in the Z direction. And I think I want to make our walls about nine feet, right? Something like that, about nine feet walls. Uh, see, I'm holding down shift and that gives you a little finer control uh, when you're scaling. Yep, come on. Um, one other thing too to keep in mind when you're scaling, if you put your mouse close to the object origin and you hit S to scale, it scales uh, very, it's a very coarse adjustment, right? If you put your mouse way out here and hit scale, it's a much finer adjustment uh, for scaling. So I'm going to move my mouse out a little bit, uh, scale it till we get to somewhere close to 9 and then I'm going to hit shift to get even a finer control over it and we should be able to get right at 9 feet okay yeah so now our walls are 9 feet tall since we scaled in edit mode we now have to uh, grab everything and move it on up so it matches uh, the origin I think we can nope uh, our snapping is a little bit off. I'm just going to eyeball it and put it right about there. That should be close enough. Um, actually, what we can do also in um, let's see object mode, since we know our origin point uh, should be directly uh, at the bottom of our object, we can go to our location in the Z uh, direction and just put it to zero, and that should move the object right uh, right down to the floor. Okay, so now we have the height of our room. Looks just about right.
right, yeah. Um, another thing too, let's take a look at this in perspective mode. So I'm going to hit F5 um, on my numpad. We'll go into perspective mode here so we can uh, get a better idea of what the final render is going to look like. Okay, so I'm thinking that I want my final render to be about this view. I was thinking uh, more of a front view of this character in this seat and more of a side view of this character over here. Okay, let's pick our room. We know that we're way too narrow, so let's scale that in the uh, X direction. And I am looking down here um, to know which direction that I want to scale in. So I want to go in the X direction, and we're going to scale it out uh, probably something like like that. At least a start, I think, looks good, right? Okay, so now from from this side, uh, we're going to scale in Y. Let's, uh, I don't know, something about like that. And let's grab the whole thing, and we're going to move it right up next to our booth there. So we're basically against the wall. That looks about right. Pretty close, okay. Um... Go ahead and put all these objects on the floor. So I'm going to pick uh, our seat object here. Uh, hit zero and Z. Our table uh, zero and our other seat zero. Okay, so now everything is on the floor. Okay, so far so good. Um, I'm going to hide this object again. Now, okay, we have our objects inside a room, so we know or I was thinking of uh, you know, our final render will be from about this perspective I think so what do we want to do on this wall here well here's what I was thinking um, whoops uh, the original let's see is this it yeah the, um, this is the original picture that I was kind of uh, getting some inspiration from and it looks like there's a big window uh, we have a little divider here and then there's a window on either side so basically it's a wall of windows we have some Venetian blinds uh, there uh, that looks pretty good what I did also was I just googled uh, diner windows um, and here it is this is what came up so I really like this this uh, picture here um, this is kind of something uh, that I had in mind. But once again, we have big windows, we have the dividers, we got our Venetian blinds here, right? Um, it might be really fun to put uh, some decals on the window here, too. Um, I like that window, it looks very nice. Once again, it's got the decals on it. Uh, I don't really like these curtains. Um, let's see, what else do we have here? Uh, here's some more windows down here. I like the backwards writing. I think we're definitely going to do that. Um, here's some more Venetian blinds, some more Venetian blinds. I think we're definitely going to put some some blinds on our windows. Um, more blinds. Yeah. Okay, so I think what we're going to do is have big windows uh, with just some separators in between them. Um, here's another, you know, it's basically a wall of windows with some separators. So, uh, yeah, I think that's what we're going to do. So let's go ahead and start uh, laying that out. Now there's several several ways we could do it, but let's let's try this. Okay, uh, with our room object selected, I'm going to uh, tab into edit mode, go back to vertex select. Uh, let's deselect everything. Control R. We're going to put some. Uh, yeah, I think we'll put some edge, some loop cuts here. Let's see. Uh, okay, wait a minute. Let me, let me think about this. Um, okay. So that will make uh, two windows with one divider. Uh, we could have, let's see. Uh, well, let's just do that. That looks good. Okay. So, uh, going from this 
picture here. Uh, there's a divider here, a divider here. The booth is kind of right in front of the window. So that's kind of what we want, right? So let's Alt, right click. Uh, yeah, we'll Alt, right click that edge loop, hit GG to edge slide, and I'm going to move it oops, over, I don't know, about, about there. Alt, right click this one. GG to edge slide, and we're going to move it right about there. Yeah, I think that looks about right. Grab that one, move it over to the edge of the booth, that one, and we'll move it kind of close here. Now we can, if we want to, uh, let's see. That's 2.22. That's 2.22. Hey, we got lucky. They're the same size. Okay. Oh, and by the way, on the uh, table, I was not happy with uh, with the. Let's go back in the. Yeah, I wasn't happy with these uh, feet being different lengths. So I did check the length and I made them all the same. All right. Enough of that. We'll go back into edit mode here. Uh, back into perspective view so we can get a little bit better idea. Okay. All right. So now let's put a another edge cut, uh, edge loop here. And we want the bottom of our window. Uh, I don't know. In our, in our, reference inspiration picture there. The window is above the table, but I, th I think I kind of like the window a little bit lower, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it there. We can always move it later if we want to. And we'll need one more to uh, define the top of our window. So let's put that, oh, about there. I think it'll be fine. All right. We'll go into face select mode. I'm going to select that face. X, delete face. I'm going to select this one. X, delete face, this one, same thing, X, delete face. Now, we are going to have to add uh, windows in later, but uh, we'll do that once we get into the material phase. Um, let's go back in the vertex select mode again, and Uh, let's see what's the easiest way. Well, no, we'll, we'll go into edge select mode. I want to select that edge, uh, that one, that one. Basically, all the edges uh, that define uh, the borders of our windows here. All right, like so. And I want to hit um, E to extrude. And it's automatically in transform mode, so I want to lock it uh, to the Y axis and just pull it on out just a little bit, right? Okay. Now, I'm afraid that from certain angles, we're going to see uh, an edge there. I don't know if it'll really matter, but uh, it might. So, let's see. What can we do? Let's go outside our object uh, from the back view here and uh, turn off back face culling. Okay, because I want to look at this from this side. Uh, let's see. Let me bring back. I'm going to shift a, well, no, here. Okay, I'm going to unselect that. Uh, what am I trying to do? Just 
trying to uh, find something. Okay, yeah, that 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 looks. This is the uh, matte cap uh, default materials that that you can use to model. Sometimes they come in handy. I find uh, for just kind of looking at things from a different perspective. Um, this is a nice one. Uh, sometimes uh, when I am sculpting in the sculpt mode, I, I like this one because it's kind of reminiscent of clay. I think, but. Anyway, I'm rambling. Um, okay, let's make sure we have our room object selected. Uh, go back into edit mode. We still have all all these selected. What I want to do is hit um, extrude, left click to lock the extrusion right where it is. Uh, I want to set our pivot center to, let's see, Let's try medium point um, and scale uh, shift Y because I want to scale in the Z and X but not Y. That's not working. Okay, so let's move this to uh, individual origins. Scale. Let's see. What I think that worked. Yeah, that, that just kind of puts a little lip. Um, little lip around our uh, object there. So if we see the edge, it doesn't look like it's just uh, you know an edge with nothing on the other side of it. I don't even know that it really matters, but uh, just in case, I want to do that at this stage. Okay. All right. Let's turn our uh, matte caps off. Look here at what we got. Um, so this is going to be roughly uh, the view that I think we're going to try to get our final render in. Um, I think it looks pretty good so far. Um, we can always expand on our room and make new windows and whatnot, but I think this is a good this is a good stopping point for now. We have our room uh, basically blocked in. Uh, we've made some windows, and uh, okay, I think we're good to go for now. Uh, in the next video, we'll make uh, some little objects to go on the table, maybe, and. Uh, Maybe we'll start blocking in uh, the scenery that we want outside uh, of our diner, too. Oh, uh, we also need to make some Venetian blinds uh, to go on here. So, um, got some fun stuff coming up. All right, good deal. Well, um, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.